robotic soldering, will it really improve your first pass yield? In the last 12 months, there's been a huge increase in robotic soldering applications. They've brought more reliable solder joints, they work 24 seven, and they can often produce and upload reports to the MES systems for future traceability. To discuss this subject, I'm joined today by a distinguished panel. Uh, to my extreme right, we have Jorg Nolte from Kurtz Ersa. Uh, to his right, we have Alessandro Sibilia from MTA. And to my right here, we have Erhard Hoffman uh, from ADOPT, uh, representing Thermaltronics. Okay, welcome, gentlemen. So I'm going to get straight into the debate and ask the first question, which is what are the benefits of implementing robotic soldering? What benefits are manufacturers likely to get? Uh, let's start with you, York. Okay, uh, I have maybe to say in advance that uh, we by ourselves are not producing uh, soldering robots at the moment, mm. uh, but we are involved in many projects where our soldering stations and our soldering irons are used. And uh, what we see is that uh, the general market is also increasing, especially in Asia. A lot of robot applications are out there. And uh, so also we are looking deeper into this matter and we try to find out what are the, the real benefits for the customer and what are maybe the critical points. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly spoken, at the moment we do see more critical points in certain applications because people have uh, finally, um, yeah, I don't want to say problems, but, but they have issues to work on to make uh, the soldering robot process a real stable process. Mm -hmm. This is what, what is our feedback that we receive currently from the market where we, have, uh, where we are in touch with soldering robots. Right. There's a lot of elements to it. I mean, you, you've got the robotic side, which is relatively straightforward because there's been so much work done uh, uh, across the world on, on robotics themselves. But it's the soldering process, which I think is where a lot of the, the, the real difficulties that, That's get. exactly the problem. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, the two gentlemen to my left, uh, they know about the soldering process, but we do see many mm -hmm. soldering robots out there where we have the impression that the knowledge about the soldering process itself is very limited to those uh, implementing the machines in the market, especially right. also in Asia. Right. So, so, Alessandro, I mean, what, what is your view on it? I mean, how easy are these things to set up and program? The, the, set, the setup itself and the programming is not, in my, in my opinion, the big question in, in terms of, of time and difficulty. If the software is standardized and adapted to the process, then it's very easy to set up. Mm -hmm. The problem is the process, the process in, in the tot, if you consider the, the, the total process, this is maybe complex because the to manage a soldering process, you need a combination of the machine, the, the soldering head, mm -hmm. the substrate, the, the wire, uh, the, the, pros the processing parameters. So uh, there's still uh, kind of needings and experience to set up a machine, an automatic machine for soldering. What I experience is often that the customer think that want to change from a manual, from a, for example, a manual soldering process to an automatic soldering, he take over, he want to copy the process, the manual process right. with the machine. For example, the wire that you use for the automatic soldering is mostly, or I would say 100% on the case, not the same wire that you use for the manual soldering. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when the customer understand how to work with automatic soldering, then the setup is easy. But there is a learning curve that is needed, changing from manual soldering to, to right. automatic soldering. So er Erhard, I mean, Alexander is ex exactly right. It's trying to emulate the, the soldering process. And Thermaltronics, who you represent, have really approached this from the soldering aspect. They actually have uh, two independent robots, one controlling the soldering iron, as it were, or the soldering head, and the other one controlling the, the, the solder uh, feed. So as close as possible to emulate what a manual operator would do. But there's a lot of challenges there. Um, yes, uh, thank you for introducing mm -hmm. the, the approach that Thermotronics uh, is taking. So they, of course, also looked at other uh, robotic soldering uh, solutions and um, said that a lot of the problems are 
um, caused by the way the machines are set up. Um, they try to approach it uh, from how the hand soldering is defined by the IPC standards and how the hand soldering is done. Mm -hmm. And for instance, one of the reasons why they have these two set axes um, is that uh, with what you do in hand soldering is um, you get tin on the tip and then you do start soldering. Mm -hmm. And when you do the soldering, you, you feed the wire to the solder joint, yeah. um, which is um, not directly at the tip, but to a little bit away. Mm -hmm. And now moving that over to the solder robot, if um, the solder feeder is fixed to the tip, mm -hmm. then you can either feed the solder wire to the tip mm -hmm. or to the solder joint in front of the tip, but you cannot choose between the two. And with the two set axes, um, Thermaltronics can do that. You, you can first feed onto the tip mm -hmm. um, to, to get the tips uh, covered with solder and then start soldering and then feed make, then make to, the to the, into the joint and not onto the tip. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the results we see with this um, are uh, a lot better than what we see on other solder robots. Um, so it looks like it's a good approach. <laughs> it looks like it's a more natural approach. Um, okay. My next question is really about uh, what are the, the uh, differences between um, using a, a laser solder, the benefits using a laser-based soldering system versus a traditional soldering iron. Uh, does anybody have any views on, on laser versus uh, uh, Yes. Basically, we use both of the technologies in our application, mm -hmm. and um, there is a situation where it's better to use a laser, and others where it's better to use the iron. So, what situations robots. would you use but a laser? For example, for micro soldering, you have to use laser because with the iron you cannot go down to, for example, 0.5, uh, uh, 0 0.2. Uh, uh, millimeters yeah. uh, with laser is possible to do it and uh, then not using wires but using for example an ink mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and then it's possible to do micro soldering basically the laser itself is not a technology which is uh, the best one for soldering because you bring a lot of energy in a very short uh, short time mm -hmm. which is not exactly what you need for soldering because you need to preheat some uh, substrates before you bring the metal to have a good metal interconnection. Right. But laser is sexy. So <laughs> in the market, a lot of customers want laser. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in my opinion, uh, the, the, for example, if you have a big mass, a thermical mass, then you bring probably too much energy to the part and maybe you burn the part. At the other side, uh, if you consider also safety, uh, the machine with laser, it's always a co more complex machine. Mm -hmm. It needs to be more precise. Yeah. Uh, it's, more, uh, it's more subject to, to tolerance of the parts. Do you need to have very precise parts or you need to compensate difference because the, and you the need laser is... And you need to have more safety issues built yeah. into it as well. But at the other uh, side, and, and, and the laser is more expensive. Yeah, and uh, more expensive. At the other side, with iron, you have soldering tips. But I think that even if you consider the total cost of ownership, uh, the, the, the iron is more pragmatic and, and uh, less expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have also to consider that a laser source after 20,000 hours, you have to change the source so, uh, or... Uh, also, the source is losing power sometimes uh, during the time, so you have to check mm -hmm. if the power is still uh, the same to, mm -hmm. to, to have a reliable uh, mm -hmm. process. At the other side, you have sometimes application where you cannot touch the part, so with laser it's better because you don't touch the part. I think in the end you have to analyze every application, and, the consider, application. Uh, and consider which, which application is better. There is not an absolute answer uh, on that. Yeah. Your, do you have any experience working with lasers? I don't think you, you have it. Uh, no, actually laser is not a technology that we are involved in. And uh, what I just wanted to say in the beginning, as you said, the soldering robot market is uh, increasing. That's true. 
but if you compare it to the overall electronic market still this is a, a niche application because people do avoid uh, soldering with uh, solder robots wherever they can. They, yeah. they try to implement the standard processes, SMT process and maybe something uh, like selective soldering. Right. And uh, so um, it is growing, but um, what we see is that also in the design departments, people are um, more considering how can we produce uh, our electronics on standard machines uh, without extra technology. I don't think, I don't think it's replacing the standard machines in, in selective soldering in these sort of areas. I think it's really, they're looking to try and replace some of the hand soldering at the end of the line where you're putting in odd form components and devices and things like this. Yes, and there are applications out there that are simply, they, you have to do it somehow and if you want to automize it, you need to have uh, a soldering robot. Yeah, yeah, okay. So. Erhard, how important is the Z-axis control uh, uh, for the, the pressure uh, with the soldering robot? Um, well, uh, again, Thermotronics has a different approach there um, mm -hmm. because they, they don't have the spring-loaded Z-axis as a standard, but um, they do have a laser height measurement mm -hmm. uh, built into robot um, so that they can compensate for warpage of, of the product right and uh, in in many cases um, or oh, yeah in, in some cases don't even touch or uh, just touch with with the defined set height mm -hmm. rather than the defined spring load but I think that's important I mean uh, that, that obviously you can compensate for board warpage and I, I think that's going to be a, a growing issue going forward with these 5g boards coming in yeah the set axis control is is uh, important for uh, basically mm. like the y and uh, <laughs> y axis but, uh, and, and x axis but uh, the other side Again, back to the question of laser and iron, for example, with laser is the z-axis more important because you have to be on the focus of the laser, so you have to warranty the position in z-axis of, of your parts. Yeah. With the iron, if, if the, the, head, the iron head is, uh, is uh, made in the right way, you compensate uh, with, with, uh, with the spring or with, with, uh, with the mechanics of the head, also the z-axis automatically, which mm -hmm. is maybe easier for maintenance and setup. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're uh, one sentence to mention and if yeah. you if you don't have uh, pressure control in some way or positioning control, it will um, it will have a bad impact on the lifetime of the tips for sure. Yes. As well. That's a good point. That's a good point. So how do these uh, automatic robotic systems really emulate a, a, an operator using a um, hand uh, a soldering iron in one hand and a soldered wire in the other? Will it need to have intelligent vision systems and fiducial marks and that sort of things on the board or the part uh, for it to be able to work accurately? I think that basically you give already the answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that uh, it's, it's possible to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's, it's the cobots are, are nice, are uh, uh, for sure uh, something which is coming more and more. But uh, at the same time, we don't have to forget that as soon as you add a, an external robot, uh, then you, have, you add some interfaces to programming, so the complexity is increasing. Yeah. And uh, at, actually, the cobots are really nice, with nice arms. I think that the, the, the real breakthrough can come when the, these robots become, become also a head. That means that... Yes. And then you don't even need fiducial uh, if, mm -hmm. if they really recognize like the, the, the person how to solder, then maybe it, it become interesting. Yeah, more, more, but inter more intelligent at the moment, optics. Yeah. At the moment, it's something which is interesting to follow up, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't think it's the pragmatic solution if you have an uh, industrial application for the moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I so may add something. You want to add something? So this okay. <laughs> okay. Um, with the vision system that's built into the Thermaltronics uh, standalone robot and to be honest, we are waiting for the inline version to come out uh, probably at the next European trade show mm -hmm. at the Prototronica. Um, but also in the standalone robot, um, the vision system that's implemented um, can be programmed 
to a fiducial mark, as you mentioned, but also to a pad, uh, to any other um, any, uh, any point that you point can use as a uh, that, that has a contrast difference to, to the surrounding. Um, the, the programming itself is done uh, after basically shooting pictures of the product um, and uh, so then you can again uh, have the, the correction done to the original mm -hmm. pictures. Um, of course, that costs a little bit of time. Right. So the, the product has to move on underneath the camera and the, the offsets have to be calculated. Okay. Um, but um, of course it helps, um, especially as a lot of the soldering applications for robots are at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. um, often where a PCB uh, or another part of the product gets soldered inside the housing and there you often do have to a lot of tolerances which add up. So if you put the housing into a, a holder and the product is inside the housing, then all these um, tolerances add up and to compensate for that, of course, the easiest is to look somewhere close to the soldering point and then do the correction. Um, the, the other thing with the vision system in there is that um, we, we don't call it an uh, AOI that's built in, but they, they did implement a verification uh, if the soldering joint has been done. That means after the uh, mm -hmm. robot soldering, you, you can also shoot a picture of the solder joint and see by the reflection. So you can do is, a verification. Is it actually done or not? You can verify. It's a verification. Yeah, that's yes. good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, so we've established that they can be set up uh, for uh, uh, manufacturing, but are they really suited for high mix environments? What do you think, uh, Jörg? I mean, uh, high volumes? Yeah, high, I mean, high if, if you've got, if you've got um, different jobs coming down the line, a hand operator can see at a moment that it's a, it's a different job and, and, and change his routine very quickly. But setting up a robot, that's uh, yeah. between jobs. So that's also the experience that we made that a lot of robots in the market are still uh, not easy to program. Mm. So you have to have a kind of standard product that you're running over the, the robot for a certain amount of, of uh, uh, time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flexibility is very often missing. So um, there are a lot of um, uh, applications that need to be adapted. Uh, and uh, it takes a lot of time still for the operators to, to adjust the machine, uh, to implement it. Uh, so we do see this is a pro problematic part still. Right, right, okay. Do you have a view on that, Alexander? Basically, I agree with Jörg. I think that the verticalization or full integration of the machine with software and, and head is the, is the answer to, to your question. You have to to integrate the software and the HMI in the way that you, you make the, the work easy for setup. For sure, if you want to change parts every hour, mm -hmm. then uh, it's probably not easy to do it uh, with a robot. But then you also have a, a, a small volume, and then it's the question if you need a robot uh, for that. Yeah. OK, uh, great. Uh, so I think um, that probably brings us close to the end of, of, of the discussion today. Um, <clears throat> I've got one really strange one question I'm going to throw in here. Uh, and it's something that somebody said to me this morning that really stuck in my mind. Uh, and they said, look, if all these machines are going to do people, uh, manufacturing engineers out of jobs, should the government be taxing the machines? <laughs> so that we all, have, uh, we all maintain a lifestyle. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting comment. Have you got anything to say on that? Well, um, I think the problem we, we all have in Europe is to find personnel. <laughs> so, finding personnel, yeah. that's true. Yeah, so, very true. Um, I think no one has to be afraid of losing the job because of the <laughs> robot right now. And um, also history shows that all these automation steps, um, th there was always the thinking, oh, once we can automate this, um, a lot of people will be replaced. Um, and it never really happened this way. There was always other jobs for these people, often higher qualified jobs. Yeah. Um, and so I think right now everyone would be happy to free an operator yeah. because they can use them some ways. That's right. I mean, they've really been brought into repetitive tasks where, you know, which can get boring for, for people. Uh, so uh, 
I think they're, they're more a, an assistance to the manufacturing process rather than a necessarily a replacement in, in some instances. I think if I can add an answer to that, first your question to, to the tax. I think that if the company do better revenue, then they will pay more taxes and also indirectly That's the machine true. pay the tax. Okay. But <laughs> Uh, to the question of replacing people, I think that the, the soldering work itself is, as, uh, from my experience when I talk to the people, even in the production, it's not the most loved uh, work uh, mm. that the people want to do. And I think that there is a lot of others uh, process that can do by hand and is still interesting to do by hand, mm -hmm. which is maybe too expensive to automate. Mm -hmm. but automating the, the soldering process is mostly uh, the reason is to increase the reliability of the process. Right. It's not always just to save money and to save people yeah. or, or to, to, to save uh, num or to reduce number of people in, in, in the, that's a good the production. Point. That's yeah. a good point. Okay, gentlemen, well, I think it's been a fascinating debate. It's one that's going to continue as the technology evolves. Uh, and I want to thank you all for taking part today. So we have uh, Jorg Nolte from Kurz Elsa, uh, Alessandro Sibilia from uh, MTA, and of course, Erhard Hoffman from Adopt and Thermotronics. And thank, thank you, you for the invitation. And thank you for thank joining you. us today.